Is there much or any cooperation with other organized crime units in the United States? Do the Colombian cartels, for example, uh, do business with the mafia? Uh, do they? Uh, we were told to stay away from them. They did not trust them, and nor would they do business on a direct basis with them. Pineapple and pizza, water and oil, the mafia and the drug cartels. These are some of the things that simply don't mix. The mafia and the cartels are the two top players in the world of organized crime. Both entities are notorious for leaving a trail of blood, bullets, and bodies when they clash. And there are multiple reasons for that. Here's why the mafia and cartels don't like working together. Why the mafia and cartels don't mix. In this investigative video, we will delve into the sensational and shocking world of powerful Mexican drug cartels and Italian criminal networks, specifically the Andrangheta. These unlikely alliances have formed due to the Mexican cartel's need for a new market and the Italian cartel's search for new drug providers and safer routes. As we explore the intricate web of connections and events, we will uncover the reasons behind the clash between these two criminal powerhouses. Prepare to be amazed by the unbelievable facts and details surrounding this topic topic as we reveal why the mafia and the cartels simply cannot coexist. Let's dive into this captivating story that combines the allure of the tabloid with the undeniable truth of real-world events. In the dark underbelly of the criminal world, two powerful forces have emerged. The Mexican drug cartels, namely the Zetas and the Gulf Cartel, and the Andrangheta, an Italian mafia cult-type organized crime syndicate based in the peninsular region of Calabria. And dating back to the 18th century, these unlikely alliances have been forged out of necessity necessity, driven by the Mexican cartel's quest for new markets and the Andrangheta's need for updated supply tracks and drug providers. The Andrangheta, encompassing the Coluccio and Aquino families in New York and the Sharipa family in Calabria, southern Italy, has risen to become the wealthiest criminal organization in Europe. With a staggering net worth of almost 44 billion euros, the Andrangheta's financial power surpasses even certain European countries' GDPs. This immense wealth has allowed them to establish themselves as major players in the international drug drug trafficking market. Italian prosecutor Nicola Gradieri has shed light on the connections between the Mexican cartels and the Andrangheta, attributing them to the Mexican cartel's need for a new market and the Andrangheta's search for new drug providers and safer routes. The United States, once the largest market for cocaine, has seen a decline in demand in recent years. In contrast, the volume of cocaine consumed in the countries of the European Union and the European Free Trade Association has doubled over the last decade, reaching an estimated capitalization of $33 billion at the retail level in 2009. Europe is rapidly catching up to the United States in terms of cocaine consumption. This shift in demand has created an opportunity for the Mexican cartels to explore new markets, and the Andrangheta has become an attractive partner. The Andrangheta's vast financial resources and their unique strategy of bypassing brokers and establishing direct contact with cartels, particularly those in Colombia, make them reliable business counterparts. Their access to updated supply tracks and drug providers Providers has made them an indispensable player in the international drug trade. Furthermore, the Andrangheta's tight-knit family structure and limited number of informants cooperating with authorities make them a formidable force. Their affiliates also control the harbor of Gioia Tauro, one of the most economically critical ports in Europe. This strategic location allows traffickers to bring high volumes of drugs through the area. Between March 2011 and June 2012, Italian authorities seized a staggering 2,632.315 kilos of pure cocaine cocaine coming through the harbor from South America. The rise of the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartel's quest for new markets have intertwined their paths, leading to unexpected alliances and joint ventures. On September 17, 2008, the economic linkage between the Zetas and the Andrangheta families of Coluccio and Aquino became public for the first time. The operation, known as Project Reckoning or Operation Solari, exposed the transportation of massive amounts of cocaine to Europe, primarily through the port of Gioia Taro. The joint venture, under the supervision of Andrangheta boss Giuseppe Coluccio, resulted in the seizure of over 16,000 kilograms of cocaine, along with other illicit substances, vehicles, and weapons. International law enforcement agencies, including the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, and Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, participated in the operation, which required 15 months of continued investigation. The arrest of Giuseppe Coluccio, hidden in a lavish penthouse in Canada, 
expose the extent of the Andrangheta's drug trafficking network. His collaboration with Giuseppe Big Joe Cutrera, his business partner in the food company Mangiar, located in Toronto, facilitated the cartel's trafficking of cocaine and heroin from Latin American countries to Europe. The revelation of this relationship led to the Andrangheta organization being added to the list of narcotics kingpin organizations by the White House, recognizing their threat to U.S. security concerns. The Andrangheta's involvement in shipping approximately 80 tons of cocaine to Europe from South America via New York in cooperation with Gulf cartel cells, particularly the Zetas group, further solidified their position as major players in the international drug trade. While Project Reckoning primarily resulted in the imprisonment of drug dealers, subsequent operations such as Crimine 3 or Solare 2, conducted in 2011, implicated bosses of the Indrangheta and Mexican drug cartels for their crimes. The issuance of 45 arrest warrants and the seizure of over 800,000 kilos of cocaine by Italian, Spanish, American, and Dutch police forces highlighted the existence of a consortium between Indrangheta families. These families, including the Girino, Aquino, Brucese, Comiso, Siderno, and Pesci families, managed drugs arriving in Europe from Central and South America. The rise of the Indrangheta as the wealthiest criminal organization in Europe and the Mexican cartel's quest for new markets have intertwined their paths, leading to unexpected alliances and joint ventures. Up next, we shall explore the clash between these two criminal powerhouses and the reasons why the mafia and the cartels simply don't mix. When two powerful criminal forces collide, conflicts and consequences are inevitable. The alliance between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels, driven by their mutual interests in the international drug trade, has not been without its share of clashes and repercussions. In this section, we will delve into specific incidents and explore the implications for both the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels. One significant event that shed light on the extent of the collaboration between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels was the Italian operation known as Crimin 3, or Solare 2, conducted in 2011. This operation led to the issuance of 45 arrest warrants and the seizure of a staggering 809,283 kilos of cocaine by Italian, Spanish, American, and Dutch police forces. It exposed the existence of a consortium between Indrangheta families, including the Girino, Aquino, Bruzesi, Camiso, Siderno, and Pesci families, who managed drugs arriving in Europe from Central and South America. The implications of this operation were far-reaching. It not only disrupted the Andrangheta's drug trafficking network, but also implicated bosses of the Andrangheta and Mexican drug cartels for their crimes. The operation revealed the intricate web of connections and the extent of their involvement in the international drug trade. The clash of power between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels has had severe consequences for both sides. While Project Reckoning primarily resulted in the imprisonment of drug dealers, the subsequent operations exposed the higher-ranking members of these criminal organizations. The arrest of Giuseppe Coluccio, the Indrangheta boss, and his business partner Giuseppe Big Joe Cutrera highlighted the reach and influence of the Andrangheta's drug trafficking network. It also exposed the Mexican cartel's reliance on the Andrangheta for transportation and distribution of drugs to Europe. The consequences of these arrests and the dismantling of their drug trafficking networks were significant. The Andrangheta's reputation as a reliable business counterpart was tarnished, and their access to updated supply tracks and drug providers was disrupted. The Mexican cartels, on the other hand, faced a setback in their quest for new markets and safer routes. The exposure of their collaboration with the Andrangheta raised concerns about their ability to operate independently and maintain their influence in the international drug trade. The clash between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels also had implications on a global scale. The White House's decision to add the Andrangheta organization to the list of narcotics kingpin organizations highlighted the threat they posed to U.S. security concerns. This designation subjected the Andrangheta to increased scrutiny and intensified efforts by law enforcement agencies to dismantle their operations. Furthermore, the clash between these criminal powerhouses exposed the vulnerabilities and weaknesses within their networks. It revealed the intricate connections and the extent of their involvement in the international drug trade. The arrests and seizures made during these operations sent a strong message to other criminal organizations, emphasizing the determination of law enforcement agencies to disrupt and dismantle their illicit activities. The conflicts and consequences that arise when the mafia and the cartels come together are a testament to the complex and dangerous world of the international drug trade. The clash of power between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels has exposed the vulnerabilities and risks associated with their alliances. It has disrupted their operations, tarnished their reputations, and raised concerns about their ability to maintain their influence in the face of intensified law enforcement efforts. As we continue to explore the shocking world of the mafia and the cartels, we will uncover more astonishing
important facts and delve deeper into the reasons why these two criminal powerhouses simply don't mix. Stay tuned for the next section, where we will examine the impact of these clashes on the international drug trade. The clashes between the Ndrangheta and the Mexican cartels have had a significant impact on the international drug trade, causing disruptions in supply chains, the emergence of new players, and far-reaching consequences for the global drug market. In this section, we will explore the repercussions of these clashes and their implications for the intricate web of drug trafficking networks. The Andrangheta's rise as the wealthiest criminal organization in Europe and their collaboration with the Mexican cartels had established a well-established supply chain for drugs entering Europe. However, the operations targeting these criminal networks, such as Crimean 3 or Solari 2, disrupted these supply chains and caused significant setbacks for both the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels. The arrests and seizures made during these operations not only disrupted the Andrangheta's drug trafficking network, but also exposed vulnerabilities within their operations. This disruption led to a power vacuum in the drug trade, creating opportunities for new players to emerge. Other criminal organizations and cartels sought to fill the void left by the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels, leading to a reshuffling of power dynamics within the global drug market. The emergence of new players in the international drug trade has further complicated the landscape. These new players, driven by their own ambitions and yeah, motivations, have sought to establish their own supply chains and routes. This has led to increased competition and conflicts within the drug trade, as different criminal organizations vie for control over lucrative markets and transportation routes. The disruption of supply chains caused by the clashes between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels has also had consequences for the global drug market. The availability and distribution of drugs have been affected, leading to fluctuations in prices and availability in different regions. This disruption has created challenges for drug users and law enforcement agencies alike as they navigate the changing dynamics of the drug trade. Furthermore, the intensified efforts by law enforcement agencies to dismantle these criminal networks have had a ripple effect on the global drug market. The increased scrutiny and disruption of supply chains have forced drug traffickers to adapt their methods and find new ways to transport and distribute drugs. This has led to the emergence of more sophisticated smuggling techniques and the use of alternative routes, making it increasingly difficult for law enforcement agencies to combat the drug trade effectively. The clashes between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels have also highlighted the interconnected nature of the global drug market. The disruption of supply chains in one region can have far-reaching consequences for other regions, as drug trafficking networks rely on complex networks of transportation and distribution. The actions of one criminal organization can have a domino effect, impacting the availability and prices of drugs in different parts of the world. The overall consequences of the clashes between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels on the international drug trade are profound. The disruption of supply chains, the emergence of new players, and the changing dynamics of the global drug market have created a volatile and unpredictable environment. Law enforcement agencies face the challenge of adapting their strategies to effectively combat the evolving tactics of drug traffickers. As we reflect on the impact of these clashes, it becomes clear that the collaboration between the Andrangheta and the Mexican cartels was not without its consequences. The disruption of supply chains, the emergence of new players, and the changing dynamics of the global drug market have reshaped the landscape of the international drug trade. The clashes between these criminal powerhouses have sent shockwaves through the underworld, leaving a lasting impact on the intricate web of drug trafficking networks. But how did these two powerhouses become this big? Let's take a trip to the past and assess the origins and evolutions of the mafia and the drug cartels of Latin America. The Mafia, Origins of La Cosa Nostra, Prepare to delve into the captivating history and evolution of the Sicilian Mafia, also known as Cosa Nostra, a notorious criminal organization that has operated on the island of Sicily since the 19th century. From its humble beginnings as small private armies hired to protect estates from bandits to its rise as a powerful and influential force in Sicilian society, the Mafia's story is one filled with sensational and shocking facts. We will explore the origins of the Mafia, its structure and hierarchy, and its main activities, which include protection racketeering, resolving disputes between criminals, and overseeing illegal agreements and transactions. Join us as we uncover the secrets and mysteries behind one of the most notorious criminal organizations in history. In the heart of the Mediterranean lies the island of Sicily, a land rich in history, culture, and unfortunately, a dark underworld that has captivated the world's attention for centuries, the Sicilian Mafia, also known as Cosa Nostra. The origins of this notorious criminal organization can be traced back to the 19th century, during a time of political 
political upheaval and social unrest in Italy. Sicily, with its strategic location, had long been a coveted prize for various foreign conquerors. From the Saracens to the Normans and Spaniards, the island had seen its fair share of foreign rule. It was under these oppressive conditions that the seeds of the Mafia were sown. The Mafia owed its origins to the Mafia, small private armies that were hired by absentee landlords to protect their estates from bandits. These private armies, composed of energetic ruffians, soon grew in power and turned against the landowners themselves. They became the sole law on many estates, extorting money from the landowners in return for protecting their crops. This marked the beginning of the Mafia's peculiar system of private justice, regulated by a complicated moral code known as Omerta. Omerta, the code of silence and secrecy, became the backbone of the Mafia's operations. It forbade mafiosi from seeking justice from legal authorities or assisting in the detection of crimes committed against themselves or others. The right to avenge wrongs was reserved for the victims and their families, and breaking the code of silence meant incurring the wrath of the Mafia. By the turn of the 20th century, the various Mafia families and groups of families in Western Sicily had joined together in a loose confederation. They controlled most of the economic activities in their respective localities, establishing themselves as the de facto rulers of their territories. The Mafia's power and influence grew, and they became deeply entrenched in Sicilian society. One key factor that contributed to the Mafia's rise was the despotic rule of successive foreign governments in Sicily. These governments often alienated the island's inhabitants, making the Mafia's system of private justice more tolerable. The Mafia's ability to provide protection and enforce their own brand of justice in the face of corrupt and ineffective authorities earned them the respect and fear of the local population. The word Mafia itself is believed to have Arabic roots, deriving from the Arabic word Mafia, meaning boldness or bravado. This reflects the audacity and fearlessness with which the Mafia operated, challenging the established order and establishing their own rules. As the 20th century progressed, the Mafia faced significant challenges. In the early 1920s, Benito Mussolini's fascist regime launched a crackdown on the organization, arresting and trying thousands of suspected mafiosi. Many were sentenced to long jail terms, and it seemed as though the Mafia's power was on the decline. However, following World War II, the American occupation authorities released many of the mafiosi from prison, inadvertently breathing new life into the organization. The Mafia's power remained somewhat weakened in the rural areas of central and western Sicily, but it continued to thrive in urban centers like Palermo. During the late 1970s, the Mafia in Palermo became deeply involved in the heroin trade. The enormous profits from this illicit business sparked fierce competition between various clans within the Mafia. This competition led to a wave of murders and renewed efforts by the government to convict and imprison the Mafia's leadership. In 1987, a landmark trial known as the Maxi Trial took place, resulting in the conviction of 338 Sicilian mafiosi on a variety of charges. This trial marked a significant blow to the organization, but it did not eradicate the Mafia's influence entirely. The origins of the Sicilian Mafia are rooted in a complex web of historical, social, and political factors. From the lawless conditions that prevailed over much of Sicily to the despotic rule of foreign governments, the Mafia emerged as a powerful force in Sicilian society. Their ability to provide protection, enforce their own brand of justice, and exploit the weaknesses of the authorities allowed them to establish themselves as the dominant criminal organization on the island. Within the secretive world of the Sicilian Mafia, a strict structure and hierarchy govern the organization. Cosa Nostra, as it is commonly known, operates as a loose confederation of about 100 groups, each claiming sovereignty over a specific territory. These groups are known as families or clans, and they form the backbone of the Mafia's power and influence. At the top of the hierarchy is the boss, also referred to as the Don. The boss holds ultimate authority and makes crucial decisions that shape the direction of the family. The position of boss is not easily attained. It requires a combination of cunning, ruthlessness, and respect within the organization. The boss is aided by an underboss, who functions as a vice president or deputy director, overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the family. The boss and underboss are supported by one or more advisors, known as consiglieri. The consiglieri play a crucial role in providing counsel and guidance to the boss, drawing on their experience and knowledge of mafia traditions. They act as a trusted confidant, helping the boss navigate complex situations and make strategic decisions. Below the boss's command are groups of about 10 individuals known as soldiers. These soldiers form the backbone of the family's operations, carrying out orders and enforcing the mafia's will. They are responsible for various criminal activities, including extortion, smuggling, and acts of violence. The soldiers are fiercely loyal to their families and are willing to do whatever it takes to protect their interests. The actual structure of any given clan can vary, with some families having more soldiers or additional layers of hierarchy. However, the basic framework
framework remains the same, with the boss at the top, supported by the underboss consigliere and soldiers. One key aspect of the Mafia structure is the code of silence and secrecy known as Omerta. Mafiosi are bound by this code, which forbids them from betraying their comrades to the authorities. Omerta is a fundamental principle of the Mafia and is enforced through fear and the threat of reprisals. Breaking the code of silence is considered a grave offense and can result in severe consequences, including death. The Mafia's structure and hierarchy extend beyond individual families. At a higher level, the heads of the most powerful families come together to form a commission. The commission's main function is judicial, serving as a court of sorts to settle disputes and make decisions that affect the entire organization. The commission ensures a level of coordination and cooperation among the families, allowing them to maintain a united front and protect their collective interests. It is important to note that the Mafia structure is not centralized like a traditional organization. Instead, it operates as a loose confederation, with each family claiming control over its own territory. This decentralized structure provides flexibility and resilience, making it difficult for law enforcement to dismantle the organization as a whole. The roles and responsibilities within the Mafia are clearly defined, with each member having a specific function. Mafiosi generally do not involve themselves in the day-to-day -day management of the businesses they protect or arbitrate. Instead, they focus on providing protection, arbitrating disputes between criminals, and overseeing illegal agreements and transactions. The Mafia monopolizes the use of violence in settling disputes, negotiating territories, and ensuring the smooth operation of their illicit activities. The Mafia's structure and hierarchy have allowed them to maintain their power and influence over the years. Despite efforts to combat the organization, it continues to operate, albeit in a more covert manner. The Mafia's ability to adapt and evolve has ensured its survival, making it one of the most enduring criminal organizations in history. The Drug Cartels of Latin America Drug cartels in Latin America have long been a subject of fascination and intrigue. These criminal organizations, consisting of independent drug lords, collaborate to control the illegal drug trade and maximize their profits. With their prevalence in Latin American countries, drug cartels have shaped the region's history and had a significant impact on its security situation. From the origins of the Gulf Cartel in the 1930s to the violent conflicts with rival cartels like Los Zetas, the story of drug cartels in Latin America is one of power struggles violence, and unimaginable wealth. In this section, we will delve into the origins and evolution of these cartels, exploring their rise to power, their involvement in various criminal activities, and the challenges they face in the modern era. Get ready to uncover the shocking and sensational facts behind the drug cartels of Latin America. Let's dive in. Welcome to our deep dive into the world of drug cartels in Latin America. In this section, we will take a closer look at the origins and early history of one of Mexico's most notorious criminal organizations the Gulf Cartel. Brace yourselves for a thrilling journey through time as we uncover the secrets and shocking events that shaped the cartel's rise to power. Our story begins in the 1930s in the border city of Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Mexico. It was during this time that the seeds of the Gulf Cartel were first sown. Originally known as the Matamoros Cartel, this criminal organization started its operations by smuggling alcohol and other illegal goods into the neighboring United States during the Prohibition era. The Matamoros Cartel quickly gained a reputation for its audacious smuggling operations, using a network of tunnels, secret compartments in vehicles, and corrupt officials to transport their illicit goods across the border. But their ambitions didn't stop at smuggling alcohol. As the Prohibition era came to an end, the cartel saw an opportunity to expand their criminal activities. With the end of Prohibition, the Matamoros cartel diversified its operations, venturing into new territories of criminality. They established gambling houses, prostitution rings, and car theft networks, solidifying their presence in the underworld. Their illicit activities brought them immense wealth and power, but it was only the beginning of their journey. In the 1970s, a new leader emerged within the Matamoros cartel, a man named Juan Garcia Abrego. Under his leadership, the cartel would undergo a transformation that would forever change the landscape of the drug trade in Mexico. Garcia Abrego recognized the lucrative potential of cocaine and decided to incorporate it into the cartel's operations. He established connections with Colombian drug cartels, most notable the Cali cartel to secure a larger share of the cocaine shipments destined for the United States. The Gulf cartel, as it came to be known, quickly became a major player in the U.S.-Mexico border region, handling as much as one-third of all cocaine shipments into the United States during the 1990s. Their influence and power grew exponentially, but so did their notoriety. The Gulf cartel was not one to shy away from violence and intimidation. They were known for their brutal tactics, including kidnappings, assassinations, and extortion. Their 
Their reputation for ruthlessness and their ability to instill fear in their rivals and enemies made them a force to be reckoned with. However, the Gulf Cartel's reach extended beyond Mexico's borders. They had a special deal with members of the Texas National Guard who would transport drugs for the cartel, further solidifying their presence in the United States. However, the Gulf Cartel's reign of power would soon face a significant challenge. In 1996, Juan Garcia Abrego was arrested, becoming the first drug trafficker to be on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list. His arrest marked a turning point for the Gulf Cartel, leading to internal struggles for leadership and a violent shift in the cartel's dynamics. It was during this time of internal turmoil that Ociel Cardenas Guillén emerged as the new leader of the Gulf Cartel. Cardenas Guillén had a vision for the cartel's future, one that would involve recruiting former military personnel to form an armed wing known as Los Zetas. Los Zetas would serve as the Gulf Cartel's private mercenary army, carrying out acts of violence and intimidation on their behalf. However, a rupture occurred between the Gulf Cartel and Los Zetas, leading to a violent turf war that would further shape the cartel's history. The Gulf Cartel also faced internal divisions and power struggles, particularly between its own factions, the Metros and the Rojos. The infighting and power struggles within the cartel resulted in a violent and chaotic period as different factions fought for control and dominance. Despite these challenges, the Gulf Cartel continues to operate and engage in criminal activities. Their presence extends to various regions, including Tamaulipas, Nuevo León, San Luis Potosi, Veracruz, Jalisco, and even the United States. With cells operating in states like Texas, Louisiana, and Georgia, the Gulf Cartel has formed alliances with other criminal organizations, such as the Medellin Cartel, Cali Cartel, and Jalisco New Generation Cartel. However, they also have rivalries with groups like Los Zetas, Sinaloa Cartel, and Tijuana Cartel, leading to ongoing conflicts and violence. The Gulf Cartel's structure and modus operandi involve a hierarchical organization with leaders, lieutenants, and foot soldiers. They engage in drug trafficking, money laundering, extortion, kidnapping, human trafficking, arms trafficking, bribery, and other criminal activities. The Gulf Cartel has been the subject of various indictments and has been portrayed in popular culture, including movies, TV shows, and books. Their story is one of power, violence, and unimaginable wealth. The Gulf Cartel remains a major challenge for law enforcement agencies in Mexico and the United States. Their presence and influence continue to evolve, making them a significant player in the drug trafficking industry. The Gulf Cartel's primary source of power and wealth lies in its extensive involvement in drug trafficking. They have established a vast network of drug production, smuggling routes, and distribution channels that span across Mexico and beyond. The cartel traffics large quantities of cocaine, methamphetamine, and heroin, flooding the streets of Mexico and the United States with these dangerous substances. Their operations have had a devastating impact on communities, fueling addiction, violence, and corruption. Law enforcement agencies have been engaged in a constant battle against the Gulf Cartel's drug trafficking activities. Over the years, there have been numerous drug seizures and arrests, as authorities work tirelessly to disrupt the cartel's operations. The Gulf Cartel is not only involved in drug trafficking, but also engages in sophisticated money laundering schemes to conceal their illicit profits. They use a variety of methods, including shell companies, front businesses, and offshore accounts to legitimize their ill-gotten gains. Extortion is another key component of the Gulf Cartel's criminal activities. They use intimidation tactics to extort money from businesses, particularly those involved in the drug trade. Failure to comply with their demands often results in violence and even death. Kidnappings and human trafficking are also part of the Gulf Cartel's repertoire. They exploit vulnerable individuals, often migrants seeking a better life, and subject them to unimaginable horrors. These criminal activities further contribute to the cartel's power and control. Violence and assassinations are synonymous with the Gulf Cartel. They eliminate rivals, informed and anyone who poses a threat to their operations. Their brutal tactics and disregard for human life have instilled fear in the hearts of many. The Gulf Cartel's notoriety has not gone unnoticed in popular culture. Their story has been depicted in movies, TV shows, and books, capturing the public's fascination with their criminal empire. But it's important to remember that behind the entertainment lies a harsh reality of violence and suffering. Law enforcement agencies in Mexico and the United States continue to wage a relentless battle against the Gulf Cartel. Their efforts to dismantle the cartel's operations operations and bring its leaders to justice are ongoing, but the fight is far from over. In this captivating journey through the dark realms of organized crime, we have explored the origins, structures, and operations of two infamous entities, the mafia and the cartels. From the sun-drenched streets of Sicily to the rugged landscapes of Mexico, we have witnessed the rise of these powerful criminal organizations and the devastating impact they have had on society. The mafia, with its hierarchical structure and code of 
silence has infiltrated various sectors of society, perpetuating a cycle of corruption and violence. On the other hand, the cartels, operating as decentralized networks, have capitalized on Mexico's strategic location and the insatiable demand for illicit drugs, leaving a trail of bloodshed and destruction in their wake. While the mafia thrives on tradition, honor, and loyalty, the cartels prioritize profit and power, resorting to extreme violence to maintain control. Both entities have left an indelible mark on the world of organized crime, their influence extending far beyond their respective regions. As we conclude this exploration, we are left with a chilling reminder of the stark contrasts between these two devils, the mafia, deeply rooted in tradition and secrecy, and the cartels, driven by greed and brutality, stand as reminders of the dark underbelly of human society. If you enjoyed this video, check out our other awesome videos detailing life in the crime underworld on the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.